So a uh, new iPhone just happened, right? Mm -hmm. uh, iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. And here's a crazy thing, Will. We already got information about the next iPhone. What? Oh. A year from now, we got rumors, all kinds of intel and information floating around, trickling out, seeping out through the seams. Next generation I iPhone. Holy moly. And I don't even think Apple could be happy with that because the last thing they want is people thinking about the next version when they're trying to sell this version mm. at the moment. But that didn't stop uh, the your typical source of rumor flow. Uh, this was reported in a number of different places and over the course of two days. And the main takeaway from these leaks is that and they're, for the record, they're not saying two generations from now. They're saying in the next version of iPhone in 2020, the notch is going to be gone. Mm. That the 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 all the various sensors, infrared, flood illuminator, proximity, ambient light, speaker, microphone, front camera, dot projector, it, that what you see right now in the current iPhone notch is going to be moved. Now, if you go ahead here, Will, and uh, and look for the article on Mac rumors, they will have uh, they will have some concept art from Ben Geskin, who he frequently does. The, I mean, he's supplied us with images in the past. He's always floating around the rumor mill, and so he took the rumors and built them into this concept here. And this this actually showcases how they're going to be able to pack these various sensors into a completely symmetrical you just passed it there will it's right it, there that's it this one yeah right there oh. uh so the bezel will be identical in scale around all four sides of the device according to this particular leak and that allows you to get a larger display dimension without substantially increasing the overall form factor of the device. Uh, so yeah, I can just read this here. Infrared, flood, proximity, ambient light, speaker, mic, front camera, and dot projector. And it is crazy slim. So obviously we, we've talked in the past about how uh, some manufacturers would love to move some of these sensors below the display and have it kind of illuminate through the display itself. That's not what this looks like. This is, uh, I don't know how if this is more or less ambitious given the amount of space that's at their disposal, but it seems to me, as an outsider looking in, easier to achieve. As opposed to having to redo the technology completely, instead find a way to shrink it. Mm -hmm. And this would give you effectively Apple's first crack at the aggressive screen-to-body ratio scenario that uh, that these other manufacturers are currently operating within. It would be its first bezel-less or notchless design. And the surprising part for me is that the aim is to do it in 2020 and not 2021 because, as you know, with these iPhone redesigns, normally what you're going to see is the TikTok strategy with the S model, and this is the first model here that we've seen with the this square cutout where where we have the triple camera. I mean, many people would think this is enough of an upgrade at the moment. That said, you can't really rest because all these other manufacturers are doing these incredible screen-to-body ratios. And I mean, in some cases, like we showcased on the last episode of this, screens that extend even beyond the front of the display. Now, this isn't the first time that the 6.7-inch iPhone has been rumored, and that's what the dimension is supposed supposed to be with this version. There was talk earlier about uh, a triple device offering all in OLED at 5.4, 6.1, and 6.7 inches. That was information that came from Ming-Chi. Quote, as we know now with the iPhone 11, they didn't go with a triple OLED offering. You only had the two devices with the OLED display, and then you, you toggle back to the LCD for the cheaper version, the standard iPhone 11, like you had with the 10R on the previous version. The other rumor floating around as of yesterday was that the frame, the structure of the device might also be taking some inf inspiration from a previous version iPhone, squaring off the edges and becoming more like the old iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 
and so forth with this squared off metal edge to it. Uh, so some some people were floating different concepts and renders around Twitter yesterday that I uh, bumped into. And then the last piece is that there's the potential here to have an in-display fingerprint scanner to go along with the facial recognition shrunk down into this much slimmer bezel. So lots of stuff, all these rumors coming out just after the launch. It, all, it seems faster than usual for us to be talking about the next generation iPhone. I mean, we're talking days mm -hmm. after the new device has launched. So, I mean, what can we really... These guys are always sort of hovering around reality. Sometimes certain things, key specifics are off. Uh, I would imagine that Apple has to be thinking about 5G fairly soon as well. And they've got, they've got to be projecting an even more competitive smartphone marketplace for 2020. So maybe they do forget about the S model and just go to a completely new form factor for their 2020 version. I don't know. I can't say. The other part of the rumor that's important to note, the fingerprint scanner piece, Mark Gurman specifically disputes that it will be in the 2020 version. He instead suggests that that's going to come in 2021. But the design itself, the notchless concept for Apple appears to be, at least as, as far as the rumor mill is concerned, a possibility for 2020. And now you're an iPhone buyer. This puts you in a confusing position, Will. You got to decide if you're going to, because not many people are on the one year upgrade cycle at this point. These things are expensive, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are on the two, maybe three year upgrade path. And this information leaking out as far as enthusiasts are concerned is as, as well received as this current generation, the, the brand new iPhone has been. Now people look at this and they're like, my goodness, maybe, I, maybe yeah. they're going to wait now. Since it is speculation, you have to take it with a grain of salt. I'm not sure if it will impact or affect you. If you're a potential iPhone buyer that's considering the iPhone 11 Pro, let's say, does this kind of news make you want to hold off? Yes or no? Let me know down in the comments. I'm interested to find out what your thoughts are. Of course, if this happens for me, I'm going to have to take a look at it, take a glance at it. But it does seem radical. It's a, it's a, it's a major shift if it can match this render and fit all that tech in there. Because the important thing to note here, Will, is that all these other manufacturers that have gone with this aggressive screen-to-body ratio bezel-less look have had to forego a lot of this technology that Apple has maintained for its version of Face ID, which it claims is far more secure than the other versions available that are strictly optical using a front-facing camera. And those ones still have some sort of a notch. Even the ones that just have some kind of front-facing camera or a motorized front-facing camera is the, other, is the other option. Up until this point, no one has shrunk these exact technological components into a bezel that mm -hmm. thin. Now, granted, maybe Ben is being ambitious here. Maybe the bezel has to get a bit bigger than what he's got in his renderings, but that's the rumor nonetheless. Uh... Sticking with smartphones for a minute, we have some, some bad Galaxy Fold news breaking via TechCrunch. We have one of the new folds is busted. We got a new new broken fold. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as what was happening to some of those early versions. It's this little kind of smudge looking thing right where the hinge is. We have... This is coming to us via Brian Heater, who is the uh, reporter there at TechCrunch. He, in his article here, he states that he had the original version, prefix Galaxy Fold, and that one had no issues for him, whereas this new one started to have this uh, strange, started to showcase this strange pixelated tiny little section. He says it's less than one centimeter. Right in the middle across, of the screen. Right in, the, well. right in between the butterfly wings. And he says it started to exhibit this problem here after 27 hours with the device. He was using it, marching around, in and out of the pocket. Claims, as far as he knows, no dust or water exposure or anything like that. He thinks it came via regular use. It's unlike the previous issues that we've seen where 
the uh, uh, the laminate mm -hmm. was getting peeled off. Obviously, this is not that. In other cases, we saw the center of the screen bulging up. This looks like some busted pixels or some kind of a, a display issue itself without any kind of bulger or, or other associated thing. It just looks like the screen, I mean, was it like that out of the box? And, and maybe he didn't notice it. Who knows? Probably not. You would notice that. You'd examine your screen. It, it obviously happened over time. Maybe the thing got jogged. Maybe you sit down, it slams. It's, again... We're in the land of the unknown when it comes to durability of flexible screens. It is so new. Mm -hmm. Hence the thing we talked about on the previous episode with Samsung warning you, even before you buy it, like, here's how you should treat your Galaxy Fold, the video that we covered yesterday. They wouldn't come out and make that if they weren't themselves concerned. Now, they do have a type of white glove repair service, apparently, that they're offering up to people to try to streamline and, and make repairs less expensive if the thing gets broken because you're not following their guidelines for use, if they deem the damage to, to, to not be your responsibility but to show up on its own accord, then, of course, they're going to be able to rep repair it within warranty, and that looks to be like what they're going to do in the case of Brian Heater's Galaxy Fold. Uh, what can I really say about it? Ah, man, there's so many eyeballs on this device specifically because of the buildup mm -hmm. and the previous happenings. Ah, it seems odd to say that I expected this. Like, I didn't, I mean, obviously I'm not rooting for this to happen. But given the fragile nature of the device, the backstory with the device, and the fact that you can only change so much about it, given the amount of time that they had to work with it, and the fact that it's so fringe and so new in general, these flexible OLEDs, I would say it's unfortunate, but like it's not the worst. No. I, I don't know if you're looking at it, but then then again, this could continue to grow. It could spread mm -hmm. like a virus because it, it does look like an array of pixels there that has some kind of issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could expand and then it could be really problematic. Uh... Yeah, I'm I, here. Just, just, let's just recap Samsung's guidelines. Don't apply excessive pressure. Don't place objects like keys on the screen before folding. Don't expose the fold to water or dust. Don't add your own screen protector to the existing screen protector. Keep the device. Ne don't keep the device next to easily deactivated objects like credit cards or implanted medical devices. I mean, this this sucks for a person who spends. 2000 bucks on a phone. I don't think anyone's going to sit there and use it and keep it in that format. You want this thing to be perfect. I know it would bug me. I know it would bug you too. Yeah. To have anything wrong with it. So hopefully it's a select number affected and hopefully Samsung can get these things repaired and hopefully people read the message loud and clear not to treat this thing like any other smartphone. Not that I'm suggesting it was mistreated by Brian Heater, but just that going forward, people people that do buy this thing fully understand the risk factor involved in purchasing something that happens to be this fringe. And they treat it as delicately as the individual in the official video who just, who by the way, is just kind of stroking it gently, mm -hmm. as you can see via the video there. I know you're a big fan of that, by the way, Will. This is your favorite video since we talked about it. You watched it 17 times, at yeah. least, I would say. You, I think you watched this for 30 hours yesterday. Oh, yeah. You it's see on that? Repeat. We went full circle on that. So, anyway, we got our first sort of busted, tiny little busted uh, Galaxy Fold, new Galaxy Fold. I have the new Galaxy Fold. It's uh, somewhere over there. Mm -hmm. I'll put my SIM card in. Don't you worry. I'll get to the bottom of it. Well, at least for me. I'll see what I see. Uh, this story, oh my goodness gracious, this thing was floating around, bouncing around. It was all over the internet. Amazon executive promotes the company's new Echo Buds while wearing AirPods. <laughs> Everybody was cracking on this guy. Uh, I mean, it's not, a, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good look, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I felt bad for him because I was like, he definitely didn't do this by design. At least that's my take from my perspective, from my vantage point, 
It's an interview he gave on site, kind of off the cuff with Bloomberg. And I don't think Bloomberg was trying to troll him. But what I do think happened, spec I'm speculating right now, and other people have speculated the same, including 9to5Mac, that Bloomberg may have handed him the AirPod for his his interview for his conference as you would do for an interview it's a really easy way to feed audio to him from whoever it is that happens to be asking him questions back in the newsroom but it turns into a meme now and this guy is getting he's just getting killed online everyone they basically the headline is that suggesting that he is an AirPod user, loves his AirPods so much he couldn't be bothered to switch to Echo Buds for his interview or his big day launching Echo Buds. Mm -hmm. But you see, Will, when you when you work for a big corporation, you're supposed to be on top of this stuff. Like you're supposed to, guy like you, Will. So you, do you blame him? Ah, uh, I mean a little bit, yeah. but there should also be people around that. Like PR? Well, because here's the thing. He also doesn't want to be perceived as a jerk. He doesn't yeah. want to be on camera there or prior to filming with reporters from Bloomberg being the guy that's like, I can't possibly do an interview with this right. earbud. Right. How are they going to perceive you and what are they going to write about you if that's how you're behaving? What you really want is a person around you, a handler, an assistant or something, that 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 is saying what you would say prior to you saying it, which is, hey, do you guys have any other kind of earpiece? Mm -hmm. Is there any other way we can do this interview without the competitor's product being stuffed in his ear mm -hmm. at the moment we're launching this other product? And this is the type of thing that you get the feeling if it were reversed, say it was Apple, they would never let this no. happen. No. If Tim Cook jumps on Bloomberg, he's not wearing an Echo Bud. It's impossible mm -hmm. that someone's going to pass that to him. So... Anyway, it's unfortunate for him. Quick recap. Amazon recently launched a new product, an AirPod competitor named Echo Buds. They're going to be featuring Alexa. They're going to be a bit cheaper. They're on pre-order right now for $129, even though I think the original rumor had them possibly even being $100. So they will be $129. He did the interview in its entirety wearing this AirPod. Now, he probably got home and his wife was just like, no dinner for you tonight. You know what I mean? It was probably, yeah. it was like, it was like uh, the candle was lit or, I don't mm -hmm. know, you come, I don't know, you're late for dinner. I don't yeah. know. That, I mean, it's just rough, man. It's unfortunate. It's sure. just rough. I, eh, what can be said about it? it he's taking the heat. He's a meme now. Once you get in the meme train on a meme engine, once you become part of that thing, you can't, you never escape. You never escape. Mm. and uh, that'll be the story for him for the next little while. I wonder if it was Bezos himself, if he would have caught that prior to inserting the AirPod. He probably would have caught it. Yeah, I would think so. Anyway, so the first orders of Amazon's new Echo Buds, or maybe it's a plan, so now we're talking about the Echo Buds again, and the meme is fully embraced, mm. as does happen from time to time. I know you're not going me on that conspiracy, Willie Do. You're too pragmatic for that, guy like you. Mm. But maybe. Yeah, I'll consider it. You'll consider it. You'll take it into consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll think about it this evening. You'll let us know in the mm -hmm. next episode if it's a possibility. So, yeah, uh, first orders arriving Wednesday, October 30th, the Echo Buds. I hope to get my hands on them. Actually, maybe do an unboxing video upstairs on box therapy. Uh, maybe you caught this one, Will. DIY dual screen laptop. It's a hot bid. Actually, it's only got 150,000 views. I mean, not only, that's that's pretty good. It's got 150,000 views. It's a channel called DIY Perks. Honestly, it never crossed my feed up until now, but it's a hot vid. It was in the news feed, actually. And so this guy on this channel, he does these DIY projects, his latest DIY dual screen laptop, in brackets, 100% DIY. People seem to love it. He took uh, an average everyday laptop and took it to another level by DIYing his very own secondary display. Now, we have seen in the past some, some manufacturers aim to put extra screens on laptops, but usually to the side of the main display, 
Whereas this guy, he puts it above the main display, which actually makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. from an ergonomic perspective. Look at the posture, okay, in this video. Great. You wish you had that kind of posture, oh. Will. You're hunched. Dream of it. You're sore. When 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 bedtime comes around, you got to drink a hot tea. Mm -hmm. uh, you you put a you got to put the electric blanket. Yeah, Otis gives me a massage. Yeah, just to soothe those aches and pains. You're in rough shape, man. So yeah. you take this guy's advice with the laptop, and you start to turn it around. You start to turn the posture around. So he takes a display, uh, just a generic. It looks like a a, a laptop display without the the electronics that you would normally have built in just the display portion and then he takes the other display components and kind of rigs them up onto the back of it and then velcros and hinges the entire thing to the laptop now to be clear the finished product it's a it's a diy so <laughs> so well huh? well what don't be, uh, you know, don't be judging here. He puts <laughs> a he he puts a battery bank in there. He puts the electronics. He puts a cover on the electronics. He's got the hinge, and apparently this battery bank can power this thing for like fifteen hours. And as far as DIYs are concerned, will, will, what? <laughs> you're smirking over there. You don't want to put this in your laptop bag. I don't know if it'll fit, but... No, look, it fits. Look. Well, his laptop. Imagine you try to bring that thing on the airplane like that. <laughs> They're like, excuse me, sir. But look, no, I, I really, I'm not trying to goof on it. I think it's pretty cool. And 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 call me crazy, as you guys normally do around here. Mm -hmm. But if a, if a manufacturer... Oh, look at that. If it a, had like a stand here. Yeah, if a manufacturer took inspiration from this and did some sort of multi-fold laptop where you had a thin hinged thing on the back like forget the two-in-one the way we've seen it but some sort of a hinged thing on the back that could flip up it could be pretty cool this is this could be diy inspiration for an actual manufacturer at a later date at some point it just it feels pretty comfy for him yeah and so you got to appreciate the diy nature the whole thing comes off via velcro so you're not committed to the dual display setup at all times because it's obviously kind of hefty. But nonetheless, he solved a little problem. The thing I always wonder with these DIY type videos is are you doing it for the DIY because you really want this or for the cool video? Mm. Because the cool video is going to be a hot video for him. Yeah, and you probably knew about it. He's going to get lots of views. Oh, he shows it can do one other thing. He can He's conferencing here. With his twin. Yeah, because he has the extra display. So now he and they're talking. It's a mirror. Oh. It's the it's the two in one scenario. He's in the boardroom. Although they're gonna look at you sideways in a boardroom with that thing. They're gonna be like, <laughs> what's this guy up to on his spare time? Uh but anyhow, you never know. It's a cool DIY project nonetheless. And I don't really think it matters if it's for the video or not. You can judge it for what it is by looking at it. It does it could act as a cool inspiration for a manufacturer to actually attack it, even though for now it's just his particular DIY. So go check out the video if you're interested. Shout out DIY perks. <clears throat> Here's a funny one. Uh, you know, I'm always following the Tesla news. We have a funny Tesla headline today. Hmm. Tesla police cruiser runs out of battery during chase. <laughs> Kirk likes that. Get a, shaking his head over there. Um... Apparently it was user error. To be clear, the Tesla fans are upset right now. They're like, "You could run out of, you could run out of gas too, easily." But for some reason, it seems funnier that the electric car uh -huh. runs out of battery during a chase. For some reason, just because it's new technology, it's like how people like to laugh at robot fails. Yeah. I didn't even know if you knew that was a genre. Yeah. People yeah. love robot fails. Ha <laughs> ha! Humans are superior. So gas powered. People, traditionalists, they like to laugh at the at the uh, battery operated yeah. cars dying. Uh, so anyhow, apparently Tesla sold a 2014 Model S 85 to the Fremont Police Department for sixty one thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars and fifty cents to replace a 2007 Dodge Charger that was being retired. 
And the goal for the police department was to try to be a little more energy efficient, uh, use less uh, fossil fuels, and to just stay up to date, Will, with the hot new tech, as you would if you were a police department. And so they purchased this thing back then. They were doing, uh, they were in a, a chase of some kind. And the Model S that was leading the chase sent a radio to the back like, hey, I'm a little low on the battery over here. Can somebody replace me? I'm going to have to back off. Can I get one of the traditional cruisers to replace me? I'm going to need to back off. And so, of course, because it's Tesla, the news travels. Everyone has a funny giggle, just like Kirk did. But it is true what everyone's saying. It could just it, it could happen with any car, with a gas mm -hmm. car. If on a shift they forget to fill it, in this case, they forgot to charge mm. the car pre-shift. And so you end up with, I believe at the time the, that it was radioed in, this is the official line here. Just slowed down to six miles of battery on the Tesla, so I may lose it here in a sec. If someone else is able, can they maneuver into the number one spot? So that's lingo, Will, when you're in a police chase. Mm. You would know that from your past uh profession yeah as what being a criminal or a i was thinking a police officer but oh. you're going the criminal route. <laughs> so it's up to you but yeah. maybe you did both maybe you were a crooked police officer cop oh. and a criminal then you really understand both sides of this language mm -hmm. but i was thinking more your past life as a deputy yeah yeah more of a positive role that's right uh so anyway that means somebody needs to go in front, so it had to be replaced. It's a funny little, it's a sp a funny little story, but it is user error at the end of the day, and it likely could have happened whether it was a Tesla or otherwise. But how about that? How about an electric police cruiser future? What do you think? Are you as intimidated, Will, by a Tesla? If you see if a I black, was a criminal, yeah. If, if you see a black and white Tesla, you're like that thing's quick. That yeah, it has some kick. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You might. You might second, uh, you might second guess that getaway. I would have to depend on their battery capacity and see if you have to. Uh, you, would, you had to turn into an endurance race. Yeah. Interesting. Uh -huh. All right. Don't get any ideas, kids. Willie, do these off the rails today. Don't get any ideas, kids. Uh, keeping it on cars for a second, you pointed this story out to me. Uh, from smartphones to pickups, Corning now offering Gorilla Glass windshields for the Ford F one hundred and fifty. For those of you unfamiliar, parts of the world maybe where you don't see a billion F-150s, it's an incredibly, incredibly popular pickup truck. And we're starting to see more and more where tech and tech components is merging with automotive. We're seeing that happen all over the place, not just in Tesla's territory, but also obviously in this case with Corning and Ford. They're going to make Gorilla Glass windshields for the U.S. market's best-selling vehicle. That's what the F-150 happens to be. And for a similar reason that you would want Gorilla Glass on a smartphone, you might very well want it as a windshield. It's going to be resistant to chips and cracks uh, and things like this. And on a pickup truck, particularly if you're frequenting a job site, you got stuff flinging up, and it actually really, well, it makes a lot of sense uh, for that type of application. Mm -hmm. It will, however, be more expensive. It's going to be sold by high performance, and it'll it'll cost you nine hundred bucks, excluding installation. So it's going to be more than a than a typical glass windshield, but presumably you're going to have to replace it a lot less. And this could be the start of uh, a trend, maybe. Apparently, Ford has a bit of history with Corning's Gorilla Glass as the GT supercar, which they make in Markham, by the way. Oh, do they? The new Ford GT. I should. I would love to go take a look at it, actually. That car is bananas, of course. Oh, yeah. They make it just down the street from here. And that one's got a Gorilla Glass windshield. But this is a, this is a very limited production that they do for the Ford GT. Whereas the F-150 is a crazy popular vehicle. So this, the idea of the application here is much more significant from an industrial perspective when compared to the, the supercar, the Ford GT. But they do have a bit of backstory. Who knows, Will? Your next, your next vehicle might have a Gorilla Glass windshield. 
And that could give you peace of mind when you're going down the dirt road. Yeah, off-roading, as I do from time to time. It's another one of your hobbies. Donuts. You're ne you, I mean, your list is so long. Hmm. You're, uh, what was the guy? You're the most interesting man in the world. Yeah. Who was he? Dos Equis? Mr. Dos Equis. I mean, who knows what you're up to, Will? <laughs> you leave here, who knows what you're up to? We all, we talk about it. Me, Kirk, Jack, we get together. We try to figure it out. We haven't yeah. gotten any closer. They're all rumors all. that uh, probably true. Wow. Every rumor is true. That's your message to the oh. world. <laughs> okay, last one for me. Wisconsin couple described the chilling moment that a hacker cranked, <laughs> that a hacker cranked up their heat and started talking to them through a Google Nest camera in their kitchen. <laughs> I, it's not funny. It's like the future of horror movies it, it, it is, is like uh, uh, hacking smart home automation. The garage door is going up and down. Mm. The heat is blasting. The robot's talking. Get out of my house! Yeah. That's the trailer. You didn't expect that, Will. I got your eardrums with that one. Very loud. <laughs> uh, you know, I... Okay, Google or Nest, whoever owns... Google owns Nest. Nest still has their offices and their people. They say, they say, look, the thing wasn't compromised. These people, they just... Their Wi-Fi got comp compromised. Mm -hmm. Like, their, their, their Wi-Fi password was easy to guess. Or I, I don't know what the official... Google's official statement is that Nest was not breached and encouraged users to use two-factor verification to secure their account. So they say their account got hacked because of a, a password thing. Apparently, the individual cranked the thermostat, the hacker cranked the, the thermostat up to 90 degrees. And the, for the person who was hacked, this is their quote, it gives me chills, just talking about it. It gives me chills, which is kind of weird because it's obviously it's hot. When they crank it to 90 degrees. So what are the chills about there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, it, he also, the hacker, I'm assuming it's a he, he also talked to them through the Nest camera and played vulgar music. I don't even know what vulgar music is. Is that hip-hop? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what? Or is there, a, is there an actual genre of vulgar music? And it's vulgar meaning, uh, yeah. Don't, yeah. Well, stay away from it. I was thinking this like, a family show, really loud, oh, obnoxious. So just m maybe metal or something like yeah, that. Yeah, heavy metal. That's right up Kirk's alley, right there. If that's what <laughs> vulgar music in, They're if, if that's what vulgar music is, then then uh, Kirk is the number one fan of vulgar music. Uh, Westmoreland told Fox, "My heart was racing. I felt so violated at that point. I don't know." Do they want to sue Google or something? Maybe they got the interview on Fox. Uh, the chilling moment that a hack, that a hacker cranked up their heat. It doesn't sound that bad. It sounds kind of yeah. I mean, they could just walk out of the house. No, <laughs> they're, still, they're trapped there. Yes, <laughs> they're naked because they're hot and they're trying to sleep, but they're playing vulgar music. Did he turn up the heat again, honey? Um, what they're never going to trust any of the devices in their house do you have to move at that just change your wife just change your password no i i don't know it's i'll tell you what i'm much more concerned with all the things listening to you and showcasing ads and who's listening to what than somebody guessing your password and turning the heat up yeah right isn't there i don't, I don't know it's a, I don't, what can i say well, it's the Maybe this could be the potential of something worse. You know, with like these smart devices. Smart like they phones. could over, they overhear a conversation and then blackmail and. Or maybe they just turn on the smart stove or something and then catches on fire. Could be worse. Is that a thing? We got but, smart stoves now as well? Yeah. Right. Or, you know, make. Uh, they could <laughs> turn on the smart toilet and the smart faucet and <laughs> flush it a couple times. So they right. can't sleep because right. it's so noisy. They could open the smart valve they can on the they could open the smart valve on the main water supply to flood the place. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know. Yeah. Imagine oh. I got I got the smart shutoff valve. 
and turn on valve for the main water supply. <laughs> Why do you need that? Because oh. it's smart, you understand? Uh, yeah. No, it's not funny. They're actually upset. I, I can see why it would be violating. If you got kids in the house and someone's whispering through the through your your yeah. hub, through your nest. Yeah. You feel violated for sure. I'm gonna crank the heat. It's like, oh no, what am I gonna do? I'm stuck. You're gonna, it's so hot in you're here. gonna cook in here. Oh. Get ready to cook. I can smell your roasting. Just basting. <laughs> basting myself. How hot can a house even get? Not that hot. Anyhow. Can there the, you have it. Can the furnace blow up? Can it like be so hot it can I'm sure it could cause a problem eventually if you're running it forever, but these people you gotta change the password right away or rip the nest off the wall. I don't I don't I don't know. Well yeah. I don't know. I override it, reconfig reset it. Yeah. Set up a can, new account. Well, they can just unplug the router. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, don't unplug the router. That'd be too easy. That wouldn't be a horror movie. Let's just unplug the router. No, no, no. They need the garage doors going up and down, the lights going on and off. They got to get cooked first. Just naked people running around. Oh, man. Technology, is, it's, it's, it's right around the corner. It's going to start to supply us with all the urban uh, legends and everything that we're not, you're not going to need a spook, Mr. Spooky guy anymore. You just, no. the AI, everything is Hal, everything's 2001 in your own house. Yeah. Although in this case, it was a hacker. It wasn't the thing going haywire. It was a, it was a guy having some fun, a hacker having some fun. Don't do that. That's not nice. No. The future is now. We're living in it tomorrow. Technically. Mm -hmm. Optimistic. Uh, uh, are, you are. Yeah. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Even if the heat gets cranked up. Well, I guess I got to wear my shorts then. Sounds no like a plan. Jeans.